y'all so welcome to my patio so this is where kind of like I started my gardening process um, it's definitely made its way outside the patio um, kind of more of like a natural gardening you know escape or um, typically what you would find but I like to start my plants most of the time inside the patio that helps with minimizing like any early you know um, I would say any early infestations for bugs any attacks on the plants while they're still young and developing those roots but I wanted to share this because um, I guess you can kind of say like the reason I'm starting a garden is kind of like threefold in this case um, one is yes I want to experience what it's like growing you know some of my own food naturally um, because of I guess you can say where I am and you know just with the <laughs> work that goes into gardening um, I will not be doing a full-on kind of homestead experience that's just not what I'm like I'm not I'm not going to do it uh, just not there not mentally um, not time wise not you know committed in that way but what I figured would be helpful is to be able to grow some things that you know you would typically buy like in the store and or you know, wanting these things but then ordering them from places that offer organic materials or organic produce and I don't get to them in time and then they end up going bad so ultimately uh, wasting money to say the least and that's a second part of it right so some of it is the natural course of action when grocery prices are pretty much at I want to say an all-time high at least from my lifetime and we're paying more than we ever have paid um, and more than I think some of these things are actually worth just because we're utilizing like the grocery stores and you know having to factor in all of those middleman costs distribution supply chain um, you know plus living wages for the farms and such and the reality is by the time those things get to the supermarkets while I'm not knocking like supermarket food at all because I will still be buying food from the supermarket um, it's just the reality is like once those produce and vegetables those kinds of things are off their um, natural kind of growing habitat they immediately begin to lose nutrition so I want to try you know going the fresh route seeing how I like this and um, I would say the third reason is because you know I do intend to kind of revive my kitchen at some point and I'm going to be doing kind of like a virtual ghost kitchen um, setup and I want to be able to offer kind of the same things to you know the people that I'm serving so I think this is going to work very well for us um, the growing zone that I'm in is zone 8b so what that means is like I'm coastal um, I am also in a place where we tend to get pretty long heated like seasons um, it's warm here pretty much I would say from like March through November um, December January February even sometimes December can be relatively warm where we're at um, January February are really the only two months where it gets like significantly cold here and um, I will say probably in like the last couple of years is where you know we've seen some of like the coldest temperatures we have in this look in this area it's kind of like when it comes to climate and capability you know all roads lead to yes right you know I don't have to do a ton for plants to do well here um, I think the biggest thing that we would face is probably you know managing like insects because because it is a an environment that they can thrive in um, pests can you know kind of like take over I fortunately have not had those experiences yet I'm sure I will I'm sure I will experience the woes of gardening um, and we'll talk all about that you know throughout the We'll talk all about those things throughout me just sharing my overall gardening experience with you. But I think, you know, it's kind of like all roads lead to yes. You know, save money, fresher food, you know, you know what's going into it, do it yourself. And 
Um, I kind of get to serve people like quality food and that's pretty much like what I was known for. So I want to definitely keep up like that branding and be able to offer those things, you know, when I start selling food again. I want to give you guys uh, a sneak peek into what I've started growing, um, talk a little bit about where I am with each variety and a little bit about what the plans are for developing the garden as we go along. I won't be showing in this like video any like seeding or anything like that. Um, I've, I'm at the point where I have started. Some of my plants are kind of like midway to um, harvest. You know, some still have a long way to go, but I think I kind of decided in the middle of all of this that I would record, document the journey, and you know not just for you guys but for me as well bring something else to the channel which i thought would be nice and you know just kind of interesting and seeing where and how my love for food comes through like holistically <laughs> and you know that's pretty much it so i'm going to be starting the series it's going to be called foliage friday and every friday i will post a video um you know god willing <laughs> that I can share a little bit of progress, update, something I've learned, you know, through this journey and just kind of like hang along so you guys can see the garden grow. Um, you know, sharing those like happy moments with me, those moments of accomplishment, all that good stuff. So I'm going to turn, actually, let's start with what's behind me. So if you guys can see in this corner, I do have a fan going because it's pretty hot where I'm at. Um, I have two plants. I have a sage plant and then I have a lavender plant. My sage plant has been with me now for, I would say close to a year. And she's doing pretty well. We had some uh, trials and tribulations where I almost let the plant die and then I was able to revive her. So, you know, I don't harvest from this plant as often as I should from cooking but i do make sure that i trim and harvest like the leaves or remove any older leaves that kind of stuff because i want the plant to stay viable i want it to stay healthy and you know continue to be able to produce for me the lavender plant i actually just picked up about uh two weeks ago or so so i know that we're kind of nearing the end of the lavender season but i wanted to have the plant to plant in the garden um, if I remember correctly, I believe that this plant will kind of seed itself and regrow next year. So I will be getting um, some beds pretty soon and then I will go ahead and plant the lavender in the garden. But as of right now, um, this is what it's looking like. It has some leaves that look like they're like on their way out but some are still thriving and I think she might need a little bit of water at this moment. Lavender is not a plant that you have to water often. They can do relatively well in dry, you know, dry soil, but it has been pretty hot here and um, that water can definitely, you know, evaporate pretty quickly. So I'm going to water that plant in a little bit. I think it needs it. Um, we have gotten some significant rain over the last like couple of days but where the plant was located i don't think it really got any so coming into this corner i have some catnip you guys can see this plant is about like three weeks into development and it's doing pretty well i started this plant late um it's a plant that you're supposed to plant in june in our zone so it's a little bit behind in growth but I started on the 14th of August. Um, it is August 31st and this is what it's looking like. So once, this is another plant, like once I have the garden bed in place, I will definitely uh, transplant to the garden bed. But for now it's doing just fine right here. And my understanding of this plant is that it is supposed to um, help, you know, with I guess cats nibbling on your garden produce so if you plant this around like the outer bed the outer bed um if you plant this around the outer bed it will lure the cats to the plant as opposed to them nibbling on your produce so i don't have uh too many issues with like stray cats here but we do have a couple and there is one that likes my yard particularly 
um she loves to lounge in my lounge chairs and you know i don't take it for granted that she might love the garden when it gets put up so the catnip is doing pretty well this i have some chives here that have not yet started to bloom and this is actually my second time planting these for this season i don't think i did uh the seeds very well the first time i attempted to grow chives this season they did not germinate for me and i'm pretty sure that was my own fault i just think at the point that i attempted to do it it was way too hot it was very early like in the summer june july and it was just way too hot here so the seeds i did them i sowed them outdoors and i probably should have started them indoors um they just never thrived i attempted to revive them it did not work so i haven't gotten any germination from this yet but i'm hoping that it will do well this go round because while it is still hot um we have had some cooler days it's been raining a little bit more it's the rainy season for us so fingers crossed on that one you guys can see i have a solid sensation hybrid spinach um, this is going to be my first time growing like spinach. I've always grown like herbs. Um, probably I would say for like the last at least four years or so I've been growing herbs. Um, even when I was like in an apartment. But now I'm venturing out into growing like, leafy greens. And you know I want to be able to harvest those things on my own. Especially because I find that sometimes when I buy them from the stores... Um, the amount that comes in some of the packs is just way too much for me and my husband to get through um, without the lettuce going bad. So I figured with stuff like this, I could just, you know, harvest it when I need it or at least be able to preserve um, the stuff from its freshest state and then use it accordingly. But I found myself just wasting a lot and wasting a lot of money, you know, because I may have... Uh, spinach once once a week or something but then now I have a whole bag of spinach you know and I'm not always like I like smoothies but I'm not like a smoothie every day kind of person or every other day so ultimately if it's not going to get used it just kind of ends up in the garbage um, and the great thing I like about the gardening component too is you know when you're not utilizing things they serve another purpose at this point um i will not be doing like chickens or anything like that but i can at least save these things or compost them you know put them in the plants let them kind of break down accordingly and they will serve as nutrients later on so at least in this case when it comes to gardening you know that stuff is not going to be going to waste and i'm happy about that so my spinach plant, I planted on the 27th, um, just like short four days ago. The germination was supposed to be uh, 14 days and you can see this plant has already started to sprout some stuff for us. And like I said, you know, with the temperatures here, uh, that's just kind of the nature of the game. I have some bok choy here. This is baby bok choy. Um, it's piche, I think that's how you say that, PK, piche. If you know the correct pronunciation, let me know down in the comments. But this I also planted on the 27th. The germination is 10 to 21 days and you guys can see. All right, guys. So my camera died um, mostly because of the temperatures. I guess it was like way too hot out here for the camera. So I switched to my phone. Um, I forgot what I was saying about the pak choy, but essentially this sprouted pretty early over here i have some black beauty uh, zucchini squash so this is my actual second sowing of this plant and um it's been just a few days and this is where it's germinated at uh, maybe like a week in total and that's where it's at right now so i'll show you guys like the first sowing some of the plants that i've moved into like grow bags in a little bit but this is <clears throat> doing quite well this was one I started outside as well. I found that the squashes tend to germinate better like outdoors, um, in my opinion. And I say better, kind of mean like faster. They kind of come into fruition a little bit quicker. Um, I have a spaghetti squash inside, which I will show you guys uh, shortly. And that one has taken a little bit longer to germinate. Um, I started in a small pot, um, one of the small like peat moss uh, trays. 
and it's taking a little bit of time to take off so over here i have some celery which you guys can see i kind of started in one of the peat moss trays also and the thing i like about these is that uh you're not you don't actually have to remove the plant from the peat moss tray when you transfer it the roots will actually go grow through the bottom and eventually that will break down and feed the soil i think this part does take a little bit longer just because it's a little bit thicker than the bottom but that is okay my celery uh 75 days to harvest germination is 21 days i think i've had this going at this point probably about um, a week and a half two weeks and that's where it's at so definitely has a long way to go next to my celery i have an oregano plant that i started um i did date it so it looks like i started on august 17th and the germination is 10 days um 85 days to harvest so we're just about under a month a little over three weeks and it's doing pretty well these actually germinated pretty quickly so i was surprised and quite happy with that um i do have a second sowing of oregano that i'm growing now so that once i transplant i'll have um you know a couple of oregano plants that i can plant around the garden but this one is doing pretty well nice green foliage you guys can see um this one was also started in one of the peat moss containers and um, i think it looks good next to my oregano i have a radish variety that i started um I want to say not even a week ago and this is one of the early harvest varieties so it's the um early scarlet and this i put in within like two to three days it had germinated i think the original germination time was six days i um, mean supposed to be able to harvest them within like 20 to 28 days so that's where the plant is now um it hasn't started producing fruit i just transplanted this over into this bigger container um i believe like a day ago or so and probably within like the next week, I will put it in something a little bit larger because it's gonna be going to fruit pretty soon. And I don't want it to, um, you know, be kind of like diminished or inhibited by like being in a container that's not large enough for it to produce what it can produce for me. So that one is doing pretty well. Down here, I have another variety of radishes and this is the Crimson Giant. This is actually a container variety. so this plant will stay here in the container and this one um it was a germination of 10 days i probably had this in for about like three days or so and this is where the plant is um oh four days yeah so i planted it on the 27 and this one is harvestable in 30 days so this one is going to produce larger radishes for me um and hopefully you know it thrives in the container it says that it's a container variety hopefully i didn't uh, plant too many <laughs> for it to uh, succeed but we shall see right now the plant is doing very well so <clears throat> sorry about the helicopter but so you know no complaints there and i'm pretty excited about it i have some bugs trying to get into the actual garden <laughs> Get, an actual, get into the actual patio. Um, I think the fertilizer smell drives them crazy and they always try to get in here, but we are screened off and that is for good reason because I am not the biggest fan of bugs. So in this corner, I have a plant, um, a corn variety that I planted back on August 14th. Um, this was a bicolor corn. I can't remember the exact name of it. And I did two I did two separate pots for those and one did okay this one is not doing well so from the videos that i've watched and kind of gathering information um this is one of the reasons that it's always great to like plant even same seeds from the same pack into different containers because sometimes you just get bad seeds that won't germinate and when they're bad you know they can affect the overall quality of the plants or you know the soil so you guys can kind of see in here i have one that is really trying hard for me out of this everything that i planted here the others have basically developed like 
fungus and mold and they are not doing anything so I probably will attempt to pull that one out and plant it with the other variety of that same plant it in the other container with the same variety corn that I had already transferred out I'm hoping that in doing that like this particular plant hasn't um you know taken on any disease that will affect the rest of my plants that are in that pot but I will see I might just decide to discard the whole plant I don't know right now but you know he's he's trying so I figured I might try to save him so up in this big pot I have my dill and this is the second planting of dill I've done for the season um, the first one was producing really well and unfortunately I just stopped using my dill the way I was early in the season and the plant died so I just went ahead and replanted some new seeds here and it's starting to sprout some dill leaves which is pretty nice um, they're definitely not harvestable yet but I think in like the next week or so um, these will probably shoot up I'm gonna give them a little bit of fertilizer uh, the next time I water them because this pot in particular when I started it I actually started it with um, I believe like potting soil and I have not yet like changed out the actual soil to garden soil so I do have to fertilize these plants um, this particular plant you know a little bit more than I would one that is sown strictly in like garden compost soil so um, I will do that and you know I think with the next good watering and then a uh, day like today where the sun follows, they will actually kind of shoot up quite a bit. Over in this pot, I have some bunching onions. So green onions that I planted, they're parade variety. I did this on the 27th as well. The germination typically is 14 days, but you guys can see that it's starting to, um, the seeds have started to germinate already. So I think we'll start to see um, some significant growth in this plant in like the next day or two but it's very nice um, when you know I can sow them directly into the soil and then just kind of like leave them alone make sure they're watered you know make sure they have what they, they need and I don't have to bother or transplant um, I think that's really nice because it allows the plant to just kind of do what it's going to do uninterrupted so I'm excited about this um, I am terrible with green onions when I buy them from the store like green onions is probably <laughs> they're probably the most single wasted item in my refrigerator when I purchase them store bought and I really want to move away from that um, being able to harvest only what I need for whatever recipe I'm using and then allowing the plant to just thrive as it's going to um, when I'm not using it so I think that's another thing I can add to kind of like why I wanted to start the garden. Um, usually because I do like to cook with fresh produce, my refrigerator is always overflowing with produce and then um, it can get a little overwhelming. So, you know, looking through, especially on days when you're like really, really tired, looking through everything to find a specific vegetable, having to pull things out to get this from behind that, like, that can get to be a little too much especially when you're trying to get something on the table really quickly with little effort and um not a lot of thought and i just had to you know have a kind of like kumbaya moment with myself where it's like you know are we just going to keep <laughs> wasting stuff because you want to have it and you want to use it but the reality is like if i have to go through a ton to actually get it done I'm probably not going to use it so I definitely want to move away from that so that's everything that's like inside the patio right now um, I'm gonna show you guys like some of the um, seeds that I've started inside but I do want to take you guys outside and show like where we are with kind of our grow bags um, I started with the grow bags because it was an affordable solution to the to getting the plants planted in um some good soil with some good air and you know enough space that's giving them the viability to grow and i wasn't uh ready or able to get the garden bed at the time so the grow bags actually were pretty inexpensive and 
they create like a nice kind of um decor for the patio and i like that so even though i will be getting the garden bed pretty soon i am going to continue growing in the grow bags as well i like them i like the aesthetic of them i also like that like you can contain certain plants within the grow bag and prevent them from kind of like growing out of control so that is my aim um you know we have a pretty nice like kind of landscape set up here and i don't want to take away from that with the gardening i know that gardening um and its natural element can lend to kind of like looking untidy um in certain cases and you know it can be a little bit overwhelming and i don't want that i really and i don't even know if this is possible if this is an oxymoron but i really want an organized garden um i don't want it to take away from the landscaping and or just kind of like that you know nice neat kind of like beautiful green scenic view and i also don't want it to um become an eyesore for my neighbors you know those are things that you also just kind of have to take into consideration um when you live in pretty close proximity to people so this is one of my grow bags um i have in here some nantes carrots i have some rainbow carrots and then I planted a uh, little like rosemary from a rosemary stem and I'm hoping that I can propagate like a full plant from it. But if I can't, I do have like an actual rosemary plant that I transplanted, but I planted these um, direct so, and you guys can see, I'm trying not to touch it's like a spider web there. <laughs> you can see that the carrots are beginning to like bloom on this side um i think i did transfer like some of these right here um but they're all kind of like blooming up and starting to do some things so i have those um i don't remember what the carrots i think oh my rainbow carrots are 67 day harvest and then the nantas are 75 so we have quite a bit of ways to go on those <clears throat> and then over here this is where I have the rainbow carrots, some more rainbow carrots rather. These were ones that I started in the uh, like peat moss containers and I had to transfer them over. So those kind of have a head start over the other ones, which is nice. Um, so they'll be seeded at different times and they'll be harvested at different times so it doesn't become overwhelming. I have some beans in here, so these like bush beans and I don't know if you guys can see like that little green. <clears throat> So it looks like those are about to sprout, which is nice. Um, I actually see a couple of them and I have quite a bit of beans planted under there. So fortunately, no birds have been down here kind of nibbling at my stuff and I'm grateful for that. And then here's the actual rosemary plant that I transplanted over. Um, it's just a store-bought rosemary plant and I love rosemary. So it's nice to just kind of have it where it can really thrive out here in its natural environment and not having to worry about like constantly refilling a container inside. Over in the sped, I have some corn growing. Um, the corn is actually doing really well. So this was a Silver Queen hybrid variety, and this did significantly better than the bicolor peach and, peaches and cream corn variety. So those are doing pretty good. I just have a little um, Velcro tie here to hold them up. Those were kind of leaning in the beginning. Um, you don't want them to lean over so they don't snap in half. The other thing I have on the side is a cucumber variety. I believe this is the muncher. And I did start my cucumbers late, so I'm just being transparent. Don't really know if I'm gonna get a harvest from those. Um, typically, cucumbers tend to do best, like harvest-wise, early June from what I've read. And I planted them, I wanna say in like, late july or something in this little bed i have another cucumber variety and this is the tasty green so that one is still growing um but nothing yet and then i have a squash variety this is butternut squash i'm actually growing on this side so you guys can see that this plant is doing really well really nice over here i'm hoping that um to train the plant to like grow up so you guys can see i kind of have it velcro to the stake um i just don't want it to go too wild because there's not a ton of room for that 
I planted a marigold that I transplanted. It hasn't done anything. I'm hoping that it does blossom. Um, but if not, I guess I'll replace it. And then I have some Swiss chard over here that I direct sowed and I'm starting to get some seedling sprouts here. So hopefully that'll grow up nice and healthy as well. On this side, I have some parsley that um, I had like in a pot at first and um, it was standing up very nicely. It tends to kind of droop down a little bit in the mid afternoon hours. And I just think that's its own protection mechanism because it is really hot. Usually when I come out in the morning or like look at it kind of late at night, the plants are standing up. I do think they just benefit from some shade during the day. So when they do this, I think it's just because they're trying to relax themselves and not <laughs> suspend like energy um, fighting the heat. But usually when I come out in the morning, they're all standing up nice and tall. I have another squash variety. So this is the Black Beauty Zucchini squash. Um, you can see I had to separate um, this plant just because of how I originally, originally laid it down. Um, the one of the actual stems is kind of separate from the rest and when it was a little bit smaller i did have them all in one velcro but since that one seemed to be pulling kind of like far with all the weight of the other ones i just decided to separate it so that's what i have going on there and then i do have so far two plants growing out of that peaches and cream variety that i had transplanted from my other pot and while there were several more down under there, these are the two that seem to be doing something. So hopefully those do survive and give me some fruit. Uh, maybe I'll get lucky and have some of the other ones like pop up. And then in my last little grow basket so far that I planted, I actually have my marigolds, my tomato and some basil. So I started my tomato plants very, very late and I think I did these somewhere at the beginning of August and this is kind of where they are. I'm hoping that they will fruit and give me something before the season for them passes completely. But on this side, I have a Roma determinate variety and then on the other side, I have an indeterminate cherry tomato variety, which I have the steak ready for it once it starts to grow up. The marigolds on this one um one it was already bloomed when i transplanted this so this one is doing really really nicely with the sun and then over here you guys can see i have some basil that i direct sowed and that is doing really really well so i can't wait to be able to harvest that um and then i also have some inside inside of some of the starters that i'll be transplanting pretty soon but this is the grow bed garden so far. And then on my little table here, which is not really a gardening table, <laughs> but I've kind of used our table that we typically sit our drinks on and stuff to just kind of hold some of the stuff I have going on. I do have some more Nantes carrots that um, need to be transplanted, but I don't have anywhere to put them right now. So they're just kind of hanging out for a little bit. They do need some water. And then I have my other oregano, which is starting to bloom pretty nicely. So um, I'm gonna actually go ahead and add a little bit of water to these because they are out in direct sun and it's really hot today and we don't want them falling over the way this one is. Okay guys, so this is like the final um, rendition, but these are just a couple of like little seedlings that I've like started. These are in my kitchen right now. Um, you guys can see I have some spaghetti squash that is kind of like blooming in these pots. Um, I don't know exactly when I started this one, but I want to say it was definitely uh, over a week ago. So these did take a little bit longer to bloom because they're inside and you know, I think the next succession planting that I do, I am going to start them outside to see if that affects like how quickly they germinate and, you know, just overall to see how it differs from starting it inside. These are my little basil. So I actually started these before the ones outside and 
But if you notice the ones that out, are outside, they're kind of like seeming like they're a little bit more ahead of these, even though they started and germinated much later. So I think that's pretty interesting. So what I have here um, are some cabbages that I've started. So this is a fairy round Dutch cabbage variety. Now, I don't know which variety is like native to where I am or, you know, what is like the most um, typically grown cabbage here, but this looked very close to what we would buy in stores so i started with this variety like all of the seeds that i got i were seeds that i could purchase from like one of my local home depots so it i guess is fall planting season they didn't have a ton of seeds but um you know it seems like a lot of people are buying seeds to start gardens or such you know so these have been in approximately four days as well and they've already started to germ so that's really good you can see a couple of leaflets here um this side not so much yet but um i have something here coming up but these are all cabbages so i think i planted like just a couple of seeds in each one i'm not trying to over plant right now for cabbages because it is just myself and my husband for the time being um and until i start you know doing whatever i'm doing with like the virtual kitchen um, we don't want to have too many cabbages just kind of sitting around to where like bugs can get to them. I will succession plant another round of this probably in like the next like week or two. Um, and that'll be, you know, just to ensure that we have a good cabbage harvest throughout like the winter and maybe early spring. So, so that is everything that I have planted. Um, sorry I didn't start you guys at the seed planting stage, but I just kind of was like, you know, I've, although I've wanted to have a garden for many, many years now, I just kind of went on a whim this year and was like, you know what? I'm a little frustrated with the grocery prices. Um, like, let's start somewhere. And I just kind of on a whim started planting and then decided I was just going to go all in. So, you know, that's kind of where we are now. I will see you guys in my next video with an update. And I appreciate you all for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.